Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. But I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to see all of you all here. And I have uh, something very, um, a word very important to share with you all tonight. And I hope that I can go through it all. Um, it's, 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 I don't know how to explain the message. Uh, it's going to be very different tonight. Usually I teach or preach. Um, might be a combination of both, but I'm thankful. Has it fallen? Well, go ahead. Pat, this is Pastor Colin. Everyone wave at him. He's not no stranger to you. You can introduce yourself. Good evening, everybody. Hallelujah. He's a friend that's closer than a brother. 
Hallelujah. When you go through your trials, when you go through your tests, when you go through everything in your life, He is with you. Hallelujah. He is that friend that sticks closer than a brother. Amen. He's here tonight. He said, if it's just two or just three, I will still show up. Hallelujah. He's here tonight. And I encourage you, hallelujah, when the altar calls, when, when the prayer goes forth, come up expecting, hallelujah, come up expecting the church from God to move, hallelujah, on your life like he's never moved on you. Because he's looking for a church. He's looking for a people that he calls his own. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm blessed, I'm telling you, I got blessed that day and every day after was different. Yeah. It was new in God. Yeah. I found out that I'm not just a body. Yeah. I'm also a soul, I'm also a spirit. Yeah. And that spirit is me. Yeah. Hallelujah, I worship God in spirit and in truth. Yeah. That's how you're supposed to worship God in spirit and in truth. If you're a true worshiper, Worship God in spirit and the truth, amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, give God the glory, hallelujah. Give him the glory. Amen, amen. Thank you, Pastor Coleman. For those of you that don't know, uh, that's my father in law, so it's always a blessing to hear him uh, preach. How, how, how far can I go? Give me a little bit more. Uh, Okay, that's probably good right there. Okay, sorry, I've been Googling a lot. So, my name is Isaac Chavez. Man, you guys are amazing, man. It's a blessing to be out here today. Uh, so, shout out to Sister Adrian for inviting me out, and I'm here to share some music with you. So, I may not be able to sing or like these brothers, or I may not play guitar like these brothers were getting down, but I can rap. And that's the talent that God's given me. Oh, I'm tripping over here. That's the that's talent that God gave me, uh, and so I use it for His glory. Amen. And so, I'm going to, I won't be here too long, I got three songs planned, but they're about three minutes each, is that, is that cool? That's fine, okay, I just want to make sure how much time I got, I drove two hours, so I want to, I want to speak what's on my heart, amen? So, I come from Costa Grande, Arizona, this is my beautiful wife, Desiree, sitting here in the front right here, that's my beautiful wife of 12 years, and I got my 12 year old daughter in the back, who's reading a book. But yeah, so I'm going to do this new song for y'all, so y'all should feel a little special because nobody's ever heard this song. So I'm going to share it with y'all. And it's just a little sample, so. Um, but the song is about that I, when I realized that God gave me a voice, I realized there are people who are willing to listen. See, the, the devil knew what God had planned for me, and so at a young age, he tried to shut me down. He tried to shut me up. And try to keep me from speaking because he knew God had a plan for me. And for some of y'all sitting out there today, the devil knows how powerful your voice is. And so he's doing whatever he can to shut you up. But he ain't going to do it in the name of Jesus. So we're going to shut it down. So let's do this. Uh, you can start it off. Let's see what happens. I do not want to crank that volume up. Yeah. 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 All right. Make sure I'm safe. Yeah. Yeah. You can turn up a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, they try to lock me in the box, I try to keep it holy I'm overcoming by the blood in my testimony I know this is what we do, gotta keep it holy Don't be trying to shut me down, I never, never focus Shut it down, shut it down, shut it down, ayy Shut it down, shut it down, shut it down, ayy Yeah, I know that I won't be here because it's grace Devil try to shut me down, take it, stay Devil try to shut me down and close my mouth so I'm asleep But he can't ask God for God as far as if I broke my knees so my chains I'm sure that you already see the picture I can see the devil figure overcome a bottle shifter He's ready to walk in favor And my head is up a G-O-E got King of Flavor, oh yeah I can't walk in silence even if that's what they want Baby, I should start a ride I'm coming up, coming up, matter who's coming up, but it's gonna be my way. And I'm gonna set up, forget about the rhythm, and I'm gonna pass this way to I've been living in the vision, the fire, the rhythm, 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 the rhyth
They try to stop me in the bottom. I try to keep it rolling. I'm both a cop and by the blood in my testimony. I know this is what we do. Yeah, the jerk is going to alert. Yeah, shut it down, shut it down, shut it down, hey. Shut it down, shut it down, shut it down, hey. Yeah, I know that I'm only here because it's great. Devil trying to shut me down, but I'm here today. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to keep it rolling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a rapper like I'm rapping my whole team, yeah. You can join a train or you can watch the team, yeah. By being shame when you're a friend, you can be Christ, 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 yeah. I'm a rapper like I'm rapping my whole team, yeah. You can join a train or you can watch the team, yeah. By being shame when you're a friend, you can be Christ, 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 Christ,
I'm on one, uh, I mean on two. Yeah, yeah, y'all ready? One, two, one, two, one, two. To show you how to expose me. I was the most to make this blessing real. So what are you doing? So we're living it up now. Yeah, we're living it up now. Yeah, we're living it up now. Yeah, what's up with everybody? I'm living it up too. Yeah, you're 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 living it up too. Check my heart and protect it. 
and ask God, Lord, have I opened up any doors for the enemy to come and harass me and harass my family? If I give him, him a foot in my house, that's all he needs. That's all he needs. As he gets a little inch in there, he's just going to boom, just bust the door open and do what he wants to do. So, Lord, where do I need to surrender? Speak to me. Those areas that I need to give to you. So, let's go ahead and out. Thank you.
Pastor Grant and his parents are also, um, uh, they pastor a church in Pastor Grant, so, you know, he comes from, from a, 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 well, he's a PK's kid, so, <laughs> hallelujah, so he's, um, you know, his mom and his, his mom is very anointed of God, she is an awesome woman of God, and so is his dad, hallelujah, but I'm, I'm more familiar with his mom, because we always have good fellowship with one another, so there's time when she wants to meet up for coffee or whatever, so, you know, she's a really good um, sister in the Lord, praise you Lord Jesus, and I'm glad that they could be here with us, let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, I've been trying to come up with a ways all this week, trying to figure out how I was going to start off this message, because there's a lot of information, um, a lot of information as to what is happening. So, I want to take, I want to go back, and, it, and it's kind of weird that that this just had to happen in in this sort of way because it was either last year this revival. Or either up in Seneca, and I think it might have been in Seneca, and it was around this time. So a year has passed, almost a year has passed, if, if the word was given at this time, at this point of revival, or if it was in, in the beginning of, of um, July of last year. But the Lord had said, and I can vaguely remember, but I know some of what He had said was that there was going to be an arising of demonic activity. Do you guys remember that? I spoke that word. And it has come to pass. He has shared with me, I believe it was, so I, it, it, I like how Facebook works sometimes. Because it gives you memories, right? It was back in... The beginning of May was, of last year was when the Lord had showed me of demonic activity that was going to arise. And not just within the body or the things that were around, but there were significant things that the Lord had pointed out to me at that particular time. But this time, He said, stay on that message, but I want to deliver another insider as to what is happening and what is going on. So I was like, okay, you know, had to really pay attention as to what he is saying. And so the word is, is that the enemy is no longer waiting for children to become adults. He is now getting a hold of them at a child or younger. Okay, how could that be? <laughs> I got words in the word. Okay, so this time he's saying that we need to cover our children even more. And the body needs to be awakened as to things that is happening around us. Amen? Amen. So if you are asleep, he is going to wake you up tonight to see things that you have not seen. So, I'm going to use scripture to back his word up <laughs> as to what he's saying. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Oh, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that 
that is worship. So that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Hmm. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And how ye know that with holdeth that he might be revealed in his time? For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now let it, let it will let until he be taken out of the way. And when shall the wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming? Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Oh my Lord. Lots of things to go over. Lots of things to go over, but a lot of things that what he says is that, is, is that Satan is going to try to sit like God himself. There is a working of iniquity, a like hidden, hidden mysteries of working of iniquity, but then the Lord says that he will reveal those things. And Satan is trying to work with his power, his signs, with his lying wonders, and trying to deceive, causing us believers and those that don't know him into even further unrighteousness. And God, for this, for this cause, God sent them strong delusions that they should, they should believe a lie. So let's look at Mark chapter 9. And so the reason why as far as this word is concerned is that God wants us to have an understanding that we need to cover our children even more. Our children and our youth. And even, and, you know, our babies, we need to cover them. And so the enemy was as we know what the enemy is. He says that he is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And he is out there to what? Kill and destroy. So he doesn't have, he doesn't care. Okay? Let's look at Mark chapter 9 and verse 14. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning him. And straightway all the people when they beheld him were greatly amazed and running to him, saluting him. Saluting him. And he asked the scribes, What question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And whenever he taketh him, he teareth him. And he falleth and gnashes with his teeth. And pinneth away, and I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answered him and said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear. 
scare him. It convulsed him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since, they, since this came unto him? And he said, of a child.
t-shirts that they're selling at Target. And they are, have you guys seen them? They're, it's, it's Baal. Do you know who Baal is? In the Bible. It is an idol. It is demonic. Do I need to tell you who he is? But this Baal represents a lot of things. And Asherah is also one that comes in and they try to deceive. So it looks good. But this is a representation of who this demonic spirit is and it's trying to lure our young people to wear it. And so they have these pictures of a goat with these horns. That is an idol. And that is Baal. But also that is a demonic spirit. And so our people, our church people need to be aware that when you go in and you do some shopping, that either the spirit is going to help you because you now need to be aware of the things that you buy. And so you've got to go in and not just in your normal self. You've got to go in with the spirit of God now when you go and buy certain things. You're crazy, Sister Adrian.
So, I just want to briefly try to, I'm going to try to briefly, okay, describe to you because this is, it says a damsel, but she was a child possessed with the spirit of divination. Let's look at Deuteronomy 18. Deuteronomy 18 and verse 10. Okay, and I'm going to explain some things just a little. Someone has it, say amen. amen. Deuteronomy 18 verse 10, And there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his sons or daughters to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. Okay? God is telling them to avoid any pagan rituals. So there's a lot of things that is happening around us. Today, people are fascinated. And even church people are fascinated with horoscopes. Come on. They're fascinated by fortune telling. Witchcraft. Why? Because there is a desire to know or to have control of their future. That is why they desire to, to be enlightened with these things. And fortune telling is the center of all of these, these things that we had just talked about. I want to tell you something very interesting that I have found. There was a study that says 8 out of 10 Christians say they believe in God. Described in the Bible. Eight out of ten. Believe in God that is described in the Bible. But out of those eight out of ten, six of those believe in one or more of the four new age beliefs. Added to their Christian belief. Six out of those ten. Believe in a new age belief. What is it? What's a new age belief? New age belief means that they believe in reincarnation. Uh, maybe that was a uh, reincarnated someone uh, in the bear over there. <laughs> no, just kidding. Don't believe that, okay? They believe in reincarnation. Astrology. Psychics, and I love this one, they believe in spiritual energy. <laughs> You've got some very good energy going on, Brother White. <laughs> I can feel your vibes <laughs> and your aura. <laughs> uh, you know, but I'm going to tell you, I know a lot of these slangs because my girls, they keep me up. To date with slants. Okay? Can you believe that, Pastor? Six out of ten. Believe in reincarnation, astrology, psychics, and spiritual energy. I, I you know, when, when, when I find out things like this, I always say, I wonder who they survey. Black. 
Okay. So there's a, another name for witches. It's called Wicca. Have you guys heard of that? Okay. Wicca. So they use this pentagram. Do you guys know what a pentagram is? A five point star. And their main symbol of, of, well, it's the main symbol of their religion and it involves the influence of new social movements. <laughs> new social movements. Have you guys heard about a lot of social movements that have been coming up? Oh. I mean, we can name one that the LGBTQ ABCD <laughs> that is a movement did you know that these witches actually sponsored those types of movements there are demonic beings and forces that support these things so there is a I must say it a perverted influence. A perverted influence that is happening in our children's books. In the clothing that we wear. And, I, and, and this is going to stomp on some of you ladies' toes. But they are, and there is an influence in the Sephora cosmetic. Oh, better not shop Sephora anymore. Better take off your... Eyelashes right now. <laughs> Rip them off. <laughs> Giving your energy as you're fluttering those eyelashes. <laughs> oh my lord. Okay. So for sponsors, a Star Witch Kit and Cosmetics. Hmm. I just learned that today. Then there is the energy source of crystals. Crystals. Be careful when you buy your children any type of jewelry or necklaces with crystals. Because they're all into that, right? Have you guys seen it? And I, and I'm like, so one of my kids tried to get crystals and I'm like, mm -mm. Let me look at that thing first. If I don't agree with it, you're putting it back. Don't look at my kids now. <laughs> they already, they already know. <laughs> and they're all looking at one. <laughs> but crystals, they are being involved with an energy source. Who got the biggest crystal laying next to on their lampstand next to their bed? Nobody's not going to talk. <laughs> the crystal lampstand. Have you guys seen those? They have lamps that are made out of crystal. And their children and young people are buying those things and they, oh, because it looks cute and it looks pretty. I'm going to buy it and I'm going to sit it right here. All kinds of perverse influence. And we need to recognize of what these things are. So I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of, of names that we need to be familiar with. The, and it will ring the bell, the bell in your head. That when you come across these words, you know that Satan is involved in it. Okay? I, I, I know how to watch myself too, so this one is going to get some of you guys. 
Feminism. <laughs> Feminism is female focused. We have rights. <laughs> I don't need a man. <laughs> Feminism. Okay. Oh man, I got all the ladies' attention. <laughs> got some toes. Individualism. You're your own authority. No one cannot tell you what to do. You're your own. Humanism. Treating humans as divine. Oh, Pastor, you're divine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sherry, I need you to help me with this one. P-A-N-T-H-E- I-S-M Pantheism Okay? P-A-N T-H-E I-S-M Oh yeah, I gave out notebooks so you can write it out. Okay? Belief that God is God. God is all. A belief that all is God, actually, sorry. A belief that all is God. Everything's God. Okay? So they don't believe in the one true God. Mysticism. Belief that there is union to a deity. Belief that there is union to a deity. Oh, don't you just feel like you have to thor in you? <laughs> the god of what? Thunder. Thunder? <laughs> Where are the guys? I need where are they all at so I can pick them. Okay. What are, you know, um, let's see, what, what, what are all these, you know, in the movies, they show them. Where are they? Come on, ladies. You know you look at them. <laughs> you know, just give you away. <laughs> um, don't text me after this service is over. <laughs> so there's, there's, there's deities. So let, let me, let me just give you a, 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 also a little bit of background. Okay, Baal and Asheroth, they are the, they are, Baal and Asheroth, they were actually brother and, their brother and sister, but they are said to have been married to each other. And then they have someone called El, which is the greater God who had these two. And Baal and Asheroth had 70. 70 offsprings from there. Then these offsprings is when you get these astrology, the names of all of these galaxies and these gods and all of these things, okay? Just to give you a little bit of a background as to all of these things. So there are lots of deities out there. And many of these deities, they have them set up at different places around the globe, around the world, and they, 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 you know, worship these idols, and they think that it's okay, so that's why you get this form where people say, I am united with this deity, because we have these same traits, or these same things, or likeness. So they think that they have this union with the deity. Then it's called, another one is called depersonalizing God. Interpreting God.
and you know working in 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 the in the city. I have you know been questioned by a lot of people who find out in my workplace. You know, oh, I heard that you're a minister. I heard that you're that you sing. I heard that you go here, and I've heard that you go there. And they say I'm spiritual too. <laughs> What kind of spiritual are you? And then they go off on somewhere, nowhere near the Word of God. And I have to explain that I am not that. I only believe in the Word of God. That I believe in the Son, the Father, and the Holy Ghost. He is all the Spirit that I need to function in what He calls me to do. And then they go off and then they talk about how, you know, oh, every morning or in the evening I get up early and I burn sage in my house to get rid of all the energy before my day. <laughs> and we used to, you know, I, I, I don't know if, if, if Native folk get offended by these white people using sage. <laughs> They do, right? But they come, they, I don't know how they, they get a hold of it, but that is their source of energy. That is their religion. They are intrigued by the spirit realm. And then there's magical thinking. A belief that everything is related by some principle, force, or element that can be manipulated by human will. Magical thinking. Manipulation by human will. And it's related to a principle, a force, or an element. So I'm going to tell you something. And I, I know that previously before this particular time, and I can't remember the exact month, and it, I, I believe that it was during the winter camp meeting, and I kind of got a lot of things. There's some times when I can hear folks saying things in the church, okay? And I try not to listen to you guys' stuff. <laughs> but there was something that caught my attention and that I really need to kind of clarify some things regarding this particular issue. And I will say, we pray for Sister Deborah. Davis at the church. Remember, there was a word that was given to her about the medication that she takes. That we were binding and rebuking every type of pharma in that source of medication that she was taking because it was causing her to be even more ill and sick. So, witchcraft Witches, their other name is sorcerer, sorcerer or sorcery, but they are also in the Hebrew text. The word means pharmacy. Okay? Don't get all woo, gonna stop taking my medication altogether. <laughs> I will tell you this. Sometime before that time, so it was, when was winter coming? January. Somewhere before that time, I believe it was maybe October or November, the Lord started dealing with me about some things. And he said, the church needs to be aware that even Satan can use any medication to cause things that should not be happening to your physical body because there are witches in those systems that are counteracting those medications and they are bringing it in here right. for us to induce ourselves and it causes our body to react and we don't know why. And he said, and this is what the church needs to do is they 
time we lay hands on her. And she talked to us about it. She told, she told us about what God had done and how God had healed her and how God had delivered her. So there are all kinds of influences that the enemy is trying to do, but we have not yet tapped into the spirit to see how the enemy is lurking. Mm. How do you know all of these things? Because I listened to his voice. I take my time to hear his instruction. Lord, what, where is our people going? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to hear? How do you want me to deliver the message? What do our eyes need to be awakened to? That is why he can speak to you like he speaks to me. But you have to be open to what the word of God is saying. So, all of these things that is happening that is either perverting the church's life, this is what the enemy is wanting to do. He does not care, just like he did with that young child. He didn't care if he threw him in the fire. He didn't care if he made him dumb. He didn't care if he made him deaf. He didn't care if he threw him off in the water and in fire. He
I was walking in the hallway and there was these two restrooms kind of close near my office. And I seen what I thought was a boy run into the girls' restroom and I was like, huh, oh, get out of there. Huh, get out. You don't be going in here. And the kid looked at me and said, I am a girl. <laughs> Same thing happened to another little boy, another girl running right to the boy's restroom. And I chased that other one out. I said, you better huh? get out of there. What are you doing in this restroom? Oh, I'm a boy. And I went to the principal and they said, you know what, you need to, like, inform us what is going on with these kids. Because I'm not about to lose my job over chasing some kid out of a restroom that shouldn't be in another restroom. But this is what's happening. So I begin to pray over this Thing over this situation, and not even knowing, and this is a warning, not even knowing that one of the kids' parents weren't there on the school ground. And I began to pray over this kid, and I said, God, whatever has influenced this young girl to decide to change, and you gotta understand that this child was only in the seventh, sixth grade. And I begin to rebuke it, and I begin to say, Lord, deal with the mother, deal with the father, deal with the parent. And as I prayed, and as time went on, something happened to the mom. The mom now is suffering with stage four cancer. I said, Lord, let it be so. Because of the deal of the confusion that she allowed to happen to her child. Deal with it as you may. But I will continue to cover that little one who does not have the, the way or the structure to say. Do you understand? And we've got a lot of these folks around that say, and it's even within our body of believers that say that it is okay. Oh, dear, they have a free will. They can choose whatever they want. Not in the body of Christ. Not in a believer. The word of God says that we have all authority over heaven and earth. We have authority over our children. We have authority to see that they are guided because that is a direction from the word of God. It is a command to teach your sons and daughters night and day and day and night the following of the ways of Jesus Christ. It's 
happening in our backyard. Right here in the our St. Carlos Unified School District. Is anybody gonna say anything about that? Probably not. I don't go around here. I don't know anybody's business, but I do know the business of God. And he said it's lurking in our St. Carlos Unified School District where they are saying that it is okay for your son or your daughter to be gay, homosexual, transsexual, bisexual, all these whatever. And you let anything go. That is not what our word says. That's right. <laughs> I got your attention. Oh. Thank you, Ooh. Lord. Have your way. Scripture says in Titus chapter 1, verse 16, they profess to know God, to recognize and to be acquainted with Him. By their actions, they deny and disown it. They are detestable and disobedient and worthless for good works of any kind. Remember the scripture says, With your lips, you worship him. You, you say that you want to worship him, but your heart is what? Ooh. Oh, glory. See, if I'm not preaching to you, I'm telling it in the spirit realm that this thing must be pushed back. Every persuasive influence that is unrecognizable to the spiritual things of God must be pushed back right now in the name of Jesus. We are pulling down every stronghold that the enemy has tried to do to influence our children, to influence the church, to deceive the body of Christ. We come against you right now in the name of Jesus. First Corinthians 10 verse 18. First Corinthians 10, verse 18. Behold, Israel, after the flesh, are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? What say I then that the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Again. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Mm. <laughs> Glory! We are partakers of Christ. Let's go back to Second Thessalonians chapter thirteen, chapter two. Sorry, verse thirteen. As we continue, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Open up our eyes. Open up our ears, Lord God. Hallelujah. Let us be aware of our surroundings, Lord God. Cover us, Lord God, with your blood. Let us not be deceived by the enemy. 2 Thessalonians 2.13 But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you. Brethren, 
beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast. Stand fast. And hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. 
children. 